ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله وسلامه عليه تسليما كثيرا اما بعد فان خير الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدى هدى رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار Today is March 17th and it's the last Friday before Ramadan inshallah this time next week we'll begin the blessed month of Ramadan and fast Allahumma sallim lana Ramadan wa sallim Ramadan lana wa tusallimuhu minna mutaqabbala as the salaf used to make that dua may Allah bring us a good Ramadan and cause us to be in a good condition when Ramadan comes, inshallah, and may he cause it to go away from us and it would have been accepted from us. As it relates to March 17th, for those of you who don't know, our children know that this is St. Patrick's Day and St. Patrick's is a saint that the Christians celebrate, they pay homage to. Today is a good teaching day for the Muslim parent to be on top of taking these moments to go over your religion with these children. The theme of St. Patrick's Day is that your child or maybe even the Muslim goes to work and he's celebrating the theme by wearing green, believing in four-leaf clovers, believing in leprechauns or those dwarfs and that stereotypical people shouldn't do that towards people who've been tried with that situation when you go back and read about that stuff with your child, who sometimes we send them to school doing this stuff, you'll find that it's nothing but kufr and shirk. It's nothing but khurafat. Has nothing to do with the reality of anything. All you have to do is go back and just put in the ugly history or reality of St. Patrick. The Muslim parent has to let the Muslim child know growing up in this environment as it relates to St. Patrick's Day is that St. Patrick, there are no saints. The saints are the awliya of Allah. And we have to believe that there are awliya of Allah from Ahlul Kitab, from those people who went before us. From those people who went before us that the Quran and the Sunnah tells us about. Again, you go back and you read the reality of St. Patrick, you see this is the religion, the, the, the Nasara especially. That's what we have to teach our children. That's what we have to understand. Verily, the awliya of Allah, the wali, the saint, is the one who, he is not afraid. He won't be afraid, yawm al qiyam. He's not afraid in the dunya. He knows everything about the religion. Everything is by the qadr of Allah and iman. They're the people who believe in Allah and they have taqwa. St. Patrick didn't have that. Now, one of the reasons I want to bring this to your attention, Ikhwani, is as I mentioned, our children are growing up in this environment. You cannot just allow them, nor can we allow ourselves just to participate in the ayad and celebrations and manifestations of what these people do and what they believe. You go back to his origins, always kufr, shirk, zulm, fisk, kadhir. Khurafat has nothing to do with the reality of anything. It's always backwards, diametrically opposed to Al-Islam. But these things creep into our religion. As I mentioned, next week, inshallah, Friday will be in the beginning of Ramadan. So during these days on social media and the durus and the masajid, there's been a lot of spread of a hadith that are true and a hadith that are not true. Some of those non-true ahadith people build upon the approach to Ramadan based upon them. Like the hadith that I'm sure has come across everyone's eyes these days. That there's coming to you a month that is blessed. 
The beginning of that month, the first 10 days are a rahmah. The second 10 days are maghfirah. And the last 10 days is al-itq, min al nar Allah will free you and emancipate people from the hellfire in those last 10 days. That's one of the most famous hadith of Ramadan. People get that hadith with sincerity and they struggle and strive to make the tahqiq of the virtues of this hadith. The first 10 days are rahmah, the second 10 days are maghfirah, and the last 10 days is emancipation from the nar. But just like with St. Patrick's, this is something that crept into our religion. The Prophet didn't say that, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the opposite is true. So don't approach Ramadan believing in that hadith in that way. Because all of Ramadan is Rahmah. And all of Ramadan is Maghfirah. And all of Ramadan is emancipation from the hellfire for any and everybody who is blessed to see and meet Ramadan. So when you meet Ramadan, inshallah, azawajal, it's all Maghfirah. The Prophet told us, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, من صام رمضان and in the riwaya من قام رمضان إيمان واحتساب غفر له ما تقدم من ذنبه any person who fasts the month of Ramadan with iman he believes in it now people look at Ramadan in different ways some people look at Ramadan as being a guest that's heavy on you you don't want him or his children to come and visit when they come you become upset because they're thuqala, Ramadan is thaqil, he's miskeen. The second person looks at Ramadan as a guest, he's happy that he's here. He has iman, he follows that hadith. Man kana yu'lim billahi wa yawm al-akhir fal yukrim daifahu. He has iman billah in yawm al-akhir. So he's going to look at Ramadan as a guest, he's going to do the best that he can. But his challenge is, is it going to be the same Ramadan from last year? The same Ramadan the year before that? The same Ramadan the year before that? Is it going to be that different Ramadan? And then there's that third group of people, the categories of the people who look at that guest in Ramadan and he's mutashowit. He can't wait till it comes. He can't wait. He doesn't wait till it comes. He can't wait till the guest comes. So the point here is, as it relates to this issue of Ramadan, all of it, all of it is forgiveness. The Prophet mentioned, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, anybody who fasts, anybody who prays Ramadan, Qiyamulayn, you'll be forgiven. He also mentioned Ramadan, ila Ramadan mukaffiratun bima baynahunna. One Ramadan to the next Ramadan is an expiation for your sins. All of those sins that you did before in the previous Ramadan to this Ramadan, inshallah, mukaffiratun, Ramadans that pass. That's how it is. Forgiveness, all of it. And all of the Ramadan is freedom from the hellfire. Freedom from the hellfire. And in Allahi utaqa min al nar wa dhalika fi kuli laylatin min Ramadan. The Prophet said every single night in the month of Ramadan, Allah will free people from the hellfire. Every single night. Not just in the third, last 10 days because of al itikaf and because of Laylatul Qadr because that's the nature of Ramadan. And when does that happen? He mentioned every single day that the fast of fast, he has two happinesses. One of those happinesses is when he is free from the hellfire. Every day at the break fast time, at the time of breaking your fast is the emancipation from the Ramadan. But why don't to focus on Ikhwani is what we always focus on during this time. And that is the first part of that hadith. The first 10 days are rahmah, the second 10 days are maghfirah, the last 10 days emancipation, no. All of the days emancipation, all of the days are maghfirah, and all of the days are from rahmah. The rahmah of Ramadan. Shahu Ramadan al-lazhi unzira fihi al-Qur'an, hudan lil-nas, wa bayinatin min al-huda wal-furqan. فَمَنْ شَهِدَ مِنْكُمْ شَهْرْ فَلْيَصُمْتُ وَمَنْ كَانَ مَرِيدًا أَوْ عَلَى سَفَرٍ فَعِدَّةٌ مِنْ أَيَّامٍ أُخَرٍ يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ بِكُمْ الْيُسْرِ وَلَا يُرِيدُ بِكُمْ الْعُسْرِ All of that ayah is rahmah of Allah throughout the month of Ramadan. All of that ayah. 
Ramadan, no doubt, as the Prophet says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, is a shahr that is Mubarak. But in that blessed month, is blessed throughout. And in the beginning, through the end, is Rahmah, Maghfirah, and emancipation from the hellfire. The month of the Quran is the month in which the the month of Ramadan is the month of the Quran, the month in which the Quran has been revealed as a guidance to the people and as a clarity for those things that need to be clarified. Who Allah is, what the religion is, what did the prophets and messengers do, what should we do? The month of Ramadan revealed and explained all of that in the revelation of the Quran. As a result of that, anybody who is a stationary resident, then you should fast. So we fast in the month of Ramadan because of the revelation of the Quran. Every Muslim knows that. But do we contemplate? The hikmah and the reason behind fasting in the month of Ramadan is because the Quran was revealed in this month. So anyone who was present, let them fast during the month of Ramadan. And from the rahmah of that is, if you are traveling or you are sick, then you don't have to fast. That's from the rahmah of the month, throughout the month. Throughout the month. So I think that some of you are aware of what's been spreading in the last day. I saw it only today. Abdullah bin Abbasin made it clear that the people who are traveling and the people who are sick, they're not the only people who don't have to pray or they don't have to fast during the month of Ramadan, as that ayat said. The people, if you are traveling, if you are sick, then let him make those days up at a later time. If he's sick with a sickness that he's going to recover from, he has a headache, he has a fever, he has a stomach ache, he has a migraine, he has some kind of attack, he has a mental panic attack, he becomes sick, can't take his meds, then let him make those days up later because that sickness, he's going to recover from that sickness, inshallah. They're not the only ones. The one who was traveling, and as we mentioned last week, Allah loves it when we take advantage of the sadaqah that he gives to us, and he loves it when you take advantage of the concession. Abdullah bin Abbasin, he mentioned, those are not the only people who don't have to fast. وَعَلَى الَّذِينَ يُطِيقُونَهُ فِدْيَةٌ اِتْعَمْ تَعَمْ مِسْكِينَ Allah mentioned another group. Those people who don't have to fast, those people who don't have to fast, and they have the ability, then they should spend and give the fidya, and spend for each day that they did not fast. Abdullah ibn Abbas said, the meaning of this ayat are those older people from our community. The sheikh who's kabir in his age, the lady who is old, the ajus in her age, they don't have to fast. I saw today in the internet that an 87-year-old British lady embraced the religion, and that news is spreading. And we say alhamdulillah for her Islam. It's a sign and indication if your parents, your relatives are not Muslim, someone's not Muslim because they're old, that doesn't mean that Allah can't and won't guide them. That lady embraced Al-Islam. She came in front of the public. She had a hijab. It wasn't the correct hijab. 87 years old. Her hair was out. It wasn't the perfect hijab. But Allah mentioned in the Quran, وَالْقَوَاعِدُ مِنَ النِّسَاءِ اللَّاتِ لَا يَرْجُونَ النِّكَاحِ فَلَيْسَ عَلَيْهِنَّ فَلَيْسَ عَلَيْهِنَّ فَلَيْسَ عَلَيْهِنَّ جُنَاحُ أَنْ يَدْعَلَ ثِيَابُهُنَّ those old ladies who are beyond the age of wanting to get married, there's no sin on them if they don't wear proper hijab. We're not gonna blame that lady for not having proper hijab at 87 years old. But she was insisting that she's gonna fast a month of Ramadan. And the Muslims who helped her accept Islam, they were pushing that narrative to show how strong her Iman was, to say that those people who are younger and stronger than her, and you're older Muslims than she is, how can you allow her to do this and you don't do it? We agree to that side, that those of us who have been Muslims for a long time, you're stronger than her, you were born and raised in Islam, how you can't fast? But we don't support pushing this 87-year-old lady to fast. The same way we don't criticize her, condemn her or them, 
about that hijab. It wasn't the perfect hijab, but the older lady in Islam who is beyond getting married, doesn't want to get married, her hijab doesn't have to be perfect, which goes to show we have to be easy and gentle in all of the right places. Older people like that, connected to us, should be discouraged from fasting. That's what I'm trying to say. Those of us who have medical issues, you should be discouraged from fasting. You just came out of a serious operation serious, recently. You should be discouraged. And fasting is not something you play with your health. You don't roll the dice and see how it's going to turn out. Not like that. Abandon the fast. And from those individuals, lastly, that Abdullah ibn Abbas and Abdullah ibn Umar, they said that those women who were connected to them and in the community who became pregnant or they were breastfeeding in the month of Ramadan, Abdullah ibn Abbas and Abdullah ibn Umar used to encourage those women and tell those women, you don't have to fast, you don't have to try, you don't have to attempt. Now, as we always mention, I understand and I appreciate, you're gonna have other opinions out there. You're gonna have other opinions. You go back and you check those opinions of the scholar so-and-so said this and he said that, that she has to fast and make it up. You could take that opinion if you want, but he's not Abdullah ibn Umar. And that other scholar is not Abdullah ibn Abbas. Do we say Abdullah ibn Umar, Abdullah ibn Abbas are right in everything they ever said it did? No, we didn't say that. But we said, keeping with the theme, and Ramadan is rahmah throughout the month. And in addition to that, in addition to that, be gentle on yourselves and be easy with those who are around you. And take the sadaq of Allah Azza wa Jal. Let those women who are pregnant and those women who have babies and they are, they are suckling their babies, let them forego the Ramadan and pay the fidya. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa nasar Allah ta'ala tawfiq wa sadaq. بسم الله الحمد لله حمد كثير وطيبا مبارك فيه وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله صلوات الله وسلامه عليه تسليما كثيرا إخواني في الله جدائز and brothers can see the ongoing work here at the masjid a lot has been accomplished in the short time since we've taken on board trying to remodel and refurbish the masjid. The goal and the objective in terms of the time was we wanted to have this done before Ramadan so that people can come to the community and enjoy the month of Ramadan in an easy and relaxed way. While all of this work has been going on, the work in the masjid hasn't stopped. Part of the work in the masjid is the madrasa, so we let the girls learn from home, online, and the boys came to the masjid. Everybody's making sacrifices. The beat doesn't stop, the dawah doesn't stop, the masjid doesn't stop. I want to take this opportunity to ask everybody in the masjid today who are utilizing the masjid, we would encourage you, volunteer and come or whatever, but we understand everybody can come. But I think everybody is in some position or a position to help out financially here in the masjid. This is a long-term project, but we're trying to get the situation sorted out before the month of Ramadan, isn't it that? So I'm here before you asking you for your generosity for the masjid, to put an extra donation forward for the supplies and the things that we are needing in order to make the masjid, inshallah, the complete and finished idea that we had in our minds. So before leaving the masjid today, we're asking everybody in the masjid to donate and to give generously. May Allah accept it from you and accept it from all of the people involved in trying to remodel the masjid. We ask Allah to make us of those people with truth and word and deed and establish us firmly upon his kitab and his sunnah. Aqim as-salat. Yarhamakumullah.